I'm Michael, and I'm going to Yale University, uh, majoring in physics and mathematics. I'm an incoming freshman, and that's about it. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, can you tell us, like, what was your reaction when you got that Yale admission? Um, so, to be honest, to be fair, Yale was, like, on my lower on the IVs when I tried to apply. So, I wasn't, like, ready for it, right? I thought my Yale interview was pretty bad compared to the other interviews I did. But when I did open my other letters from Harvard and Cornell, I didn't get in. And so when I saw the black screen from the, when I opened up Yale, I was like, wait, what? Kind of thing. It didn't kick in right then, but it started kicking in like maybe a few hours later and stuff after, you know, just recognized, realized all the stuff there, yeah. Right. Tell us a little bit about your background. Like, a little bit about your back, back background. Uh, so I went to uh, the, the largest high school public high school in Oregon. It's called David Douglas High School. So it's a little bit from a more poor, less like uh, opportunities kind of background. And so I didn't have a lot of opportunities at school. I did do a few clubs. Like um, I started a robotics club my senior year. I did STEM club for uh, junior and senior year. And then I was a part of our NHS for Senior year, I was part of the executive board. So those are a few things I did at school. But outside of school, I participated in the summer science program, which was a very rigorous six-week summer program where you're with 36 other people from around the world, so even internationally. And we researched asteroids at Georgia College State University. Mm -hmm. uh, we used our own original observations from our own telescope, so we used a telescope and then we took pictures of this asteroid over a few days and then we programmed using python and using like linear algebra to kind of calculate the orbital elements and then that helped us simulate like a 3d model of the orbit around mm -hmm. the sun of this asteroid and then we did some other stuff like made clones of this asteroid with small deviations and then it's like orbital elements which is like how it orbits and kind of saw how it like the timeline over like 50 billion years or something like that how if it would survive if it would crash in the sun if it would like eject it into outer space and stuff and that was kind of things we did over at the summer science program and then i also did the young leader summit which was last year i'm doing it right now as a mentor but last year i was a scholar which was held at usc and basically what we did was we did a lot of workshops a lot of networking with other students because there was 200 other scholars here so we met with a lot of uh, what's the word? we met a lot of people a lot of panels a lot of sessions we had a lot of questions it was just a big environment where we can all ask questions all get to learn about each other and use each other uh, as resources too all right really quickly if you found value in this podcast so far i've been exactly where you are i'm sharing the exact case studies doing live q a's and free one-on-one -on -one calls because i wish someone had done this for me so it's free but we're gonna be closing soon so join with the first link in the description and let's get back to the interview okay so like tell us like when did yale first enter your mind as a possibility they all kind of enter my mind like i think i one of my uh my upperclassman from my high school, he got into Yale and he's a year above me, right? So I, it was kind of on my mind a little bit then. I then I went to his little presentation thing, had a little help from him. And, you know, that sort of entered my mind then too. I think it was like low on radar as college applications started. I did spend a lot of time on the application, but I wasn't as super hyped about it as, you know, now. Okay, okay. So... Take us through your stats that you applied. Stats. Uh, I applied with uh, unweighted 4.0. We didn't have weighted at our school. Mm -hmm. uh, I submitted a 1430 SAT score, 740 on math, and 690, I think, on reading. So, And our school's average that we report is like, I think, a mid-1100, which mm -hmm. is inflated a lot because we aren't, aren't required to take the SAT at our school. So... If you actually made everybody take the SAT, it would be like maybe at the 800, slow 1,000s kind of thing. People who submitted or had test scores with people who wanted to take SAT. So that's just a little bit of a factor, but I was still above average. Uh, I took two APs, and then I was able to submit two AP scores by my senior year. So I did AP Human Geography. I got a five on that. I self-studied for AP Physics 1. I uh, got a four on that. And then my senior year, I took AP Calculus. AP chemistry and AP, uh, and AP statistics. I self-studied for 
self studies for uh, physics C, mechanics, and EM, which I reported on my application. That's about it for stats. I don't have anything really crazy at all. Okay, so you said you had like a 1430 SAT. Did yeah. that make you think like I'm not enough for this these admissions? Because a lot of people have like crazy SATs for admissions. Like I that. guess it, de it depends on your background, your school background as well. I think if you're more from more competitive areas, that might not feel good enough. I think for me, it didn't feel like too good. It felt good enough to put me on the radar a little bit. Okay. But I wasn't really too worried about it as much. I submitted my SAT score to all of them, all the schools I applied to, because I thought, you know, it's good enough for what my background is. And yeah, and I also talked with a Yale admissions officer, at least for Yale, they said that they will look at your SAT score. And if uh, it doesn't help your application, they will disregard it. And if it does, then they'll, you know, add it to your application. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's true because it's coming from an admissions officer. So basically, if you submit a SAT score to Yale, it will either not help or it either do nothing to your application or help you out. It, it won't make it worse kind of thing. And like how many times did you take the SAT? Uh, I think I took it three times. I took the paper one. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a 1250. I took the uh, August one last year. That was the 1430, and then I got a worse score the next one. So, like, a uh, follow-up question. Were you the valedictorian, or were there people ahead of you? So, our school, we don't have a uh, weighted GPA. So, this year, when I looked at our graduation, we had, like, 19 valedictorians. So, 19 people with 4.0s. So, yeah, I was valedictorian, but it wasn't really a competitive process since we don't do weighted GPA. And a lot of the other people didn't take all the AP kind of classes. Yeah, so stick us to your activities. What's the one thing you did outside of class that you think made Yale admissions officers stop and pay attention? I think first was the summer science program, which I talked about a little bit before, but mm -hmm. I already covered that. So I will talk a little bit about physics. Since my school didn't really offer AP physics whatsoever during my junior year, mm -hmm. I decided to self-study for it my junior year and so I did through that process and I had a little you know how I didn't have a lot of help but my math teacher was there to kind of a little bit supervise and give as much resources as he can and so he was there to sort of like kind of see how I'm doing and I was later able to use him as a recommendation letter for not only math but also physics because he saw me doing self-studying physics and working with others with physics because my senior year, uh, I had a self-study calculus BC class mm -hmm. because our calculus BC class, it, uh, what's the word? it was during our wind ensemble period, so I decided to take wind ensemble, but he opened up a pseudo calc BC class during his mm -hmm. AP physics class. So I did that so that calc BC would appear in my transcript. But also during that time, I helped uh, kind of teach a little bit of AP physics to his AP physics because it was his first year. So I did a little bit of teaching, a little bit of helping around. He's able to uh, mention that in the recommendation letter too. So yeah, it's just that math that math class wasn't. I didn't get any formal instruction from him, and he's able to uh, talk about a lot of that in his recommendation letter. So in his recommendation letter, uh, he was able to talk about uh, math in general from two years, doing two years with him, talking about self-studying physics my junior year, and also talking about how I helped teach his class and up around and with himself as well. A lot of people have been talking about like portraying that you were impactful with your activities. How do you think you portrayed that to Yale? I guess, I mean, other than the activities description, I don't think there was much impact I was able to illustrate through my essays. I mean, let's see. For, they had one essay talking about like a sort of passion you have, and I connected physics to like puzzles, and now I see like starting from what? Well, Starting from like the border pieces, which is like Newtonian mechanics and stuff, and how I'm trying to like maybe piece together the more center pieces as I like work towards undergraduate and possibly because there's missing pieces in physics, I kind of use this as a metaphor in one of my essays. I right, ended for another essay, the other big essay. I just talked about growth through one ensemble, which wasn't much impact. So I didn't see as much, or through my essays, there wasn't as much impact illustrated per se, but maybe through my recommendation letters that I was able to uh, get illustrated. You still there? Great. I'm back. Hello, Sorry welcome that. back. It's just that I use my iPhone. It never happened. It just got disconnected. So I just connected a cable. Mm, I see. Anyways, where were we? I think we were talking about, I think I was talking about, I think a little bit about my math teacher and the recommendations. And my... Okay. 
and you started talking about your essay as well, right? I think let's continue with that. Oh yeah, and, and the essay, yeah. Okay, uh, I guess what so, really the bulk of it is... I'll just ask a question first, so yeah, it's yeah. easier for me to cut it. Okay, so what did you write your main essay about? My main essay, so you're talking about my personal statement? Yep. Yep, so my personal statement, I talked about uh, weightlifting, and I connected that to my genetic condition. So just a little bit of a brief preview. Uh, my genetic condition is called uh, multiple heredity exostosis, and basically that boils down to a uh, bony tumor growth growing all over my body, and I've had to have a lot of surgeries to just remove that and stuff. And so that was just a little bit part of my essay, but... I talked about how I over kind of came some of the challenges or pushed through all the challenges that a genetic condition brought me to me. And I used the metaphor of like a barbell going up and down about like different pressures that kind of I felt at each little point kind of. And so basically at the top, I feel a lot of pressure or, or yeah, I feel a lot of pressure at the top. And as you go down, the pressure starts increasing until you're at the very bottom of the barbell as you bench. That's where the most pressure is. I just talk about my life a little bit then, and then I talk about um, how I started weightlifting, how I slowly started to lift that barbell up. Wait, my personal statement was very similar as well. I really? used powerlifting with like some physics metaphors as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And so, then a little bit of yeah, and a little bit of a, a little bit of numbers I put in. I I, ben I benched one twenty or two twenty five as a body weight of one twenty which I put numbers as, uh, I guess one of the lines I remember a little bit ish, I don't quote fully, but I talked about how my height is I'm a little shorter on the short end, I'm under the first percentile height. And I said how I turned that one percentile of height to a one percentile of lifting. So lifting almost twice my body weight is something that under 1% of the population can do. So that's part of one of my favorite lines of my personal statement too. It's uncanny how similar our essays were. Yeah, and I also talked about also recognizing other people's barbells, like their like journey, their struggles too. So that's another kind of uh, little bit aspect of it too. And if you like, I could send it to you. Yeah, perfect. Like I love to read it, and I love to show you mine as well. Mhm, mm that'd be cool. Yeah, I'll give me that. Uh, all right. So, like, how many essay topics did you go through before landing on this one? It was. I had my thoughts on my genetic condition at first, and trying to connect it to weightlifting because that's a big part of my life and that's something that people get like uh, a little bit curious about when they see me as well, right? You may think that someone that's on the short end, someone on the smaller end is it can't hold that much strength within them. But me, I've been able to, you know, show that, but I don't try to like be so, what is it, egotistic about it. So I just kind of went through different topics. More, before it was like mainly, um, mostly about my genetic condition, but then I try to change it a little bit more and more and more and so it's starting instead of mainly being about my genetic condition it was more about weightlifting now and mm -hmm. my genetic condition as a like a side topic kind of thing i didn't make it the main focus anymore in my new essay Perfect. let's talk about the supplemental essays mm -hmm. uh, which one gl supplement essay was the hardest for you the hardest i don't think they were super hard in general mm -hmm. they had two big essays and then four short takes which was like 100, 200 characters each for the short takes. Uh, I already had my ideas brainstormed for all the other ones. So my first one was about the physics and the puzzle metaphor. And that was just, just came through a lot of drafting and also working on the other supplemental essays for other universities. And then the other one was about a community, I think. Uh, and I just connected that to my uh, wind ensemble experience, uh, music history with piano and how like piano is in like a main I started with like solistic stuff, just not doing it myself, and I joined a group kind of effort thing, and how that kind of changed and evolved uh, with my own piano skills, and also as collaborating as a group too. So yeah, and my short takes, I can pull up. Let me pull up so I can get a little bit of a refresher about my short takes. Pull it up. Everything is really slow. The takes I kind of like. The short takes are a little bit harder to talk about. I think. I guess not really talk uh, brains but find how to word those uh, those essays, those answers. And so let me talk about, let me look up what, uh, the first, one of the first, the first short take was what inspires you. And I just talked about weightlifting. So I guess it was a re-mention, 
but I guess in a little bit of a different light. Then the second short take was uh, if you could teach a college course or write something, what would it be? And I talked about Rubik's cubing and how it can mirror life's complexities with all of the different scrambles. And then other than a, a family member who has uh, had a significant influence on you, I talked about one of my friends who also self-studied with me with physics and with this pseudo calculus PC and how you know his wit inspires me to take initiatives and then the last short take was what is something about you that is not included anywhere else in your application and with this uh, short take I think it's one of my favorite short takes I took a very unserious approach which is kind of a tip I would give to others is in your college application don't take things super seriously you know there's supposed to be that professional aspect to it but when you can find the chance to just be yourself and to be humorous, take it. And so what I said in that short take, and the question was, what is something about you that is not included anywhere else in your application? I said, I am the master of hide and seek, voting in the spots my friends cannot. I'm a savvy shopper in the kids section. Cheap prices. Leg room, feet hanging off the bed, not an issue. Being short has its perks. So you can see that I kind of took a very, very fun, very, very humorous approach to that. And I would recommend trying to find places in your application where you can do that because that adds a lot of personality that makes the missions readers know that you're not just a robot kind of person. You have life into you sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So that's a big tip I would have. So like a follow up question would be for you would be how do you portray real authenticity when you're actually like trying to impress these admissions officers? Oh, that's a really good question. I don't, I don't know if I have a good answer to that. What was the question again? How do you portray authenticity when you're actually just trying to impress these admissions officers? Can you like maybe rephrase that so I understand a little bit better? Okay, so you know like a lot of people when they start their application, their main purpose is to get into a university, right? Mm -hmm. But like a lot of people say that you have to be real in order to portray yourself. Julie. Yeah. So like, how do you do that when you're just trying to impress the admissions officers? Hmm. I think that you shouldn't look at it as trying to impress the admissions officers. Keep that, yeah, keep that in mind. But these admissions officers have read thousands of essays and they will tell when you're not yourself. So you have to think about it. If you're trying to be someone you're not, they will tell and that will negatively impact your emissions readings versus if you just try to be yourself and just maybe i'm not saying lie about things but maybe stretch the truth a little bit right i'm not gonna fully know that but trying to be staying close to the truth as much as you can but maybe skewing that a little bit in your favor kind of thing it can help but just try to stay as close to the truth as you can but also being yourself What's the one piece of advice you would give to high school students looking to apply to Yale? Apply to Yale, specifically. That's a good question. Uh, again, I think just be yourself. I, think. I don't know the, the, the supplemental essays for this year's, but I can say that with my essays last year, I think just they really like the word interdisciplinary. So if you can maybe show that like curiosity about different things and trying to piece them together like different subjects they really really like that kind of thing since it's like a little bit more of a liberal arts education over here so i think definitely try to have a little bit of an aspect not just have your uh interests focused on one subject but maybe try to branch it off into you know different fields or something like that thank you so much last question mm -hmm. would it be possible for you to share your activities or essays with the chat? yeah with the chat, um, yeah, it's possible, yeah. How would you like me to do that? Yeah, so you could just send it over to my LinkedIn or my email. Mm -hmm. We could just review it. That's possible. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm. Rest up. Are you probably ready? Yeah.